Hey guys, it is Damien and I hope you're having a great day. I am here actually in our brand new uh, studio. Uh, it's almost finished and complete. I've got some soundproofing we just put in behind me and the rest of the walls behind the camera are actually going to get painted and then we'll be up and running. So I'm super excited about it. Uh, I've been doing this actually by myself. Uh, my wife has helped me out a little bit with it. But I wanted to do this video, it was actually not about our new room, but about a couple of questions that I got from the new subscribers. Uh, one in particular was a gentleman who actually has a hot dog and hot dog company uh, that he is getting ready to start. The Hot Dog Daddy uh, is the name of the company. The question was actually how to market a hot dog style product, uh, more or less a meat, a processed meat product, uh, to grocery stores and grocery markets. Um, he has some convenience stores. I'm just reading some notes I have over here. Uh, convenience stores and restaurants and bars lined up. He's actually getting ready to launch the product in January. So the question was, how do you market that type of a product, uh, which is a little different, of course, and also the handling, the processing, and the logistics are a much different endeavor compared to a product like a granola or a shelf-stable room temperature uh, snack. Uh, there's a lot of differences with processed meats and the refrigeration, the transportation of the product and getting making sure that it stays at temperature when it gets distributed so there's a lot of different dynamics that come into play much different than other food products so i'm going to give you a couple of couple words of advice number one when it comes to marketing or you want to present this product to a grocery store i would personally start with a lot of local grocery stores uh, what i mean by that is stores that are kind of mom and pop independently owned um, not the Kroger's uh, Whole Foods and these national chains nationwide chains because the the most of them go through a service called rangeme.com uh, when it comes to different categories of food products they are now actually utilizing that website to track down products that they may be interested in and they would contact you through that website uh, when you go to a mom and pop grocery store or something that's locally owned um, you can go and pitch it in person. Uh, what I would highly recommend is that you bring in, if you've got several flavors, bring in as many flavors of the product you have, number one. Uh, make sure that it's in the final packaged product, not a sampling packaging, something that's done and clean and finished and ready for the store shelves. The reason why I say that is um, you want to give the potential buyer a clear view mentally. You want to have them see exactly what it is that they're going to buy not a sampling of what it could be or something that you're working on that's not really done yet. Make sure it is literally, if I handed it to you right now, you can put it on the shelf and sell it to a customer. Has to be complete, okay, number one. Number two, the majority of the time when you go into these places, and they're not restaurants, they're not bars, they're not places that are gonna cook the product and serve it, but they are gonna sell the finished product like a retail grocery store, they are going to want you to sample it, okay? So do keep that in mind. Uh, when I went into, our candy went into some local grocery stores here in the, in, in the city that I'm at, um, they actually had us sample at every store. They gave us nine stores and we would set up on the weekend and every single weekend we would have to be there. We set up a table and sampled out the product. So expect that they're gonna probably want you to sample it. That's perfectly fine, that's, that's normal, okay? But it's easier, it's a lot easier and faster to get yourself into a local store as opposed to a national chain. So it's a lot easier to do that uh, because you don't have to go through a lot of corporate buyers. You don't have to go through uh, a barrage of emails and communications back and forth about the product before you send out a sample. They look at it. It's a long drawn out process. Um, it's not saying that it's not a process that you should not take advantage of and try, but getting your foot in the door with a lot of local eateries like you've done already, that sounds great. The restaurants, the bars, uh, convenience stores. If you've already got your foot in the door there, that's fantastic. So then you can leverage that. You can use that and say, look, go to a local uh, grocery store. If it's uh, Bill, and, Bill and Susie, uh, local grocery, high-end grocery gourmet store, whatever it may be, you can approach them and say, look, I'm already in five bars. We've got five restaurants already lined up. We're launching in January. So you have a co-packer. There's someone making it for you. So all of those things are huge pluses. You've already established that. So leverage it, let people know that you already got those things going because then they're gonna say, well, wow, this guy's obviously got his stuff together. He's got the logistics. He's got the ability to have it mass produced and then brought into the store, you know, in case packs. They're not gonna want to buy five or six packages. They're gonna wanna buy five or six cases of the product and that's traditionally how it would work. 
but getting into local stores that it's a lot smoother, easier, and faster to get your foot in the door, I would highly recommend. And a lot of times this may be you actually going out and hustling like you've done already with, with getting into these places by going out into those places. I remember when I had to just simply, I had to cold call, pick up the phone and I called the, the corporate buyer for uh, the chain, the grocery chain that I spoke with and I got our candy in their stores. I literally spoke to them straight up one-on-one -on, -one on the phone. This is, my name is uh, Damien. I've got this, this, and this. This is what we do. I want to be rolled out in some of your stores locally. How does it work? What do you need from me? That's the same approach you need to take with them. Pick up the phone or go to the store, talk to the manager, the buyer, whoever is in charge of bringing in that product. But keep in mind also that a lot of grocery stores have divisions of categories. They have buyers set up for certain categories. Uh, meat and cheese and dairy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they've got different category buyers for that. It's not simply one person buys breads and buys bakery and candy and canned goods and all of that stuff. Traditionally, it's just not done that way. So keep in mind that they're gonna have a category buyer. They're gonna have someone specializing specifically in meats and sausages and such like that. So um, let them know too that you've got the ability to fill large orders because you have a processor who is making it for you. Also know how much that processor can make of the product. This applies to any of you. If you're watching this and obviously you're not into, into, into making hot dogs or sausages, that's fine. This same scenario though can go for any co-packer. Understand their capacity, what's their maximum output, because as you begin to sign up restaurants, pubs, uh, grocery stores, cafeterias, if it's food service, on and on and on, you need to know that that co-packer is gonna have the capacity to fill those orders. So it's kind of like thinking about every possible scenario, understanding those scenarios, bringing those scenarios to your co-packer and saying, look, this is what I expect to do, can you handle it? Because you don't want to be the one hustling the stuff, going out, securing these different accounts, and then not having the ability to fill them because your co-packer is maxed out. That's not something you want to do. So taking those steps little by little as you've done with those places you've already going into, it's a great, great start but you need to leverage that. <clears throat> and now, the other thing, sorry about that guys, I'm trying to fight a little bit of a cold in my throat. The other thing I'm reading here is that he also has, which is fantastic and I'm glad he brought this up, is that he has a federal trademark. He has a trademark that he has established for his business. Now, I highly recommend any of you that are doing any type of food business or you're getting into the food business and you've thought about it and such, try to finalize the plans to make a decision and get a trademark done for your product. It's going to give you a lot of legal leverage down the road, and it's ultra important that you have those set in place because as you begin to build a brand, you wanna have the legal protection for your trademark. Okay, making sure that nobody can take it, use it, manipulate it, and try to uh, replicate it. You don't want that to happen. So the more that you have this done, prior to you doing a big launch or exposing yourself, to the market, the better off you will be. Okay, now the other thing that I want to mention to you really quick, the type of product that he has, uh, sausage, hot dog, that style of food, you can brainstorm and think of a lot of places that you can solicit to get that type of a product sold in bulk. Now, what I mean by that is there's universities that have stadiums. Um, there's food service companies that cater to a lot of businesses, hospitality, hotels, resorts, kids um, kids attractions. You've got different places like, not necessarily Disney, but these types of places that where families go, they go through hot dogs, they go through sausages, they go through a lot of that type of food. So you also want to brainstorm how many different places can your product be sold to. And you need to make a list of those and literally start to pick up the phone and solicit them. The reason why is if you go through some of the food service businesses and allow them to distribute it, your margins are going to be much lower because they're going to, there's the middleman. I'm not saying that's bad, but what I'm saying is, is that if you want to go that route, they can distribute it for you. But there's a lot of other places that that food distributor, food servicer, will not go to. And that's where you come in and you need to just pick up the phone and barrage, call everyone that you can and let them know about your product. Because if you call 20 of them and you can land three new accounts and they're bringing in several thousand dollars a month or even more than that, it was well worth calling 20 people. When I called the, the company that finally took us on board, I think I went through about 10 or 15 companies before I finally, I was literally doing cold calls, before I finally got somebody on the phone that said, yes, we would love to try your, your candy, try your product out. So it's worth it. Call 20 of them, call 30 of them, call 40 of them. 
because if you can get three, four, five, or even 10 of them, it's well worth it. And let me see one last thing. So the other great thing about um, getting into the bars and restaurants and convenience stores is the turnover, especially when it comes to um, seasons, when it comes to certain times of the year. Keep that in mind too. Uh, depending upon where you are, he's in Milwaukee. Um, so depending upon where you are, even within the state, try to find those places that are more touristic, that has a lot of tourism. Um, every state's different. Of course, Florida is known for its beaches and Disney. What I mean by this is that know your state. Find out what is the most tour touristic place, places that tourists come. They come with their families, they come with their kids, they come with a lot of people. Those are also places that you want to keep in mind. Okay, and this goes for pretty much any type of food product. We actually got a, um, in the state that we're at, we have a lot of uh, parks where people do hiking and they go into the woods. We have a line of granola and trail mixes that we ended up getting, surprisingly, they came to us. We got that in, in their, their parks and recreation, in their, um, their building there that has a lot of the uh, commissary stuff where it's got foods, it's, got, it's kind of like a mini mart, but it's in the middle of this forest area. Um, we had a line of products that we got into their, their stores. And it was something I never really thought of. But then I started thinking to myself, wow, who, who eats trail mixes? Who eats things like energy bars? So hikers, campers, any of that type of thing. So that got the wheels turning. So then I ended up calling a dozen more other places that were related to being in the woods and being in these places. And we picked up a couple more accounts. Same thing goes for any of your food products. Think and brainstorm. How many different places can I possibly sell this product? Don't limit yourself to just the possibility of a local restaurant maybe a grocery store, maybe a bar, but think outside the box. There's a lot of places, like I said before, hospitals and colleges, universities, they all have cafeterias. They have food. They need food. They need suppliers. It's not going to hurt you to pick up the phone, call them, and say, hey, look, I've got this, this, and this. You think that would fit good with your menu? Here's some pricing, and I made it. It's made locally, and I can fill any size order. So with that being said, try to maintain a local presence. Don't try to nationalize. Don't get yourself out too, too far yet. Gain some momentum by getting a lot of local accounts. And this goes, again, for any type of food product, not just a hot dog or a sausage. Get yourself local. Own the market locally, in a sense, okay? Be in a lot of places locally. Then go to the next level and get to a national chain, maybe a food broker who can roll out you know, on, a, on a bigger scale. So I hope that kind of gives you some brain, so give you some ideas on how to approach them, as well as, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, some other places that you can go to. I'm fighting this cold. So keep that in mind, and uh, as always, if this uh, helps you out, guys, please do give me a big thumbs up. If you've got any questions about the idea of approaching uh, different venues, let me know down below, and I'll be happy to help you as soon as I can. So take care, guys. Thanks.